Is he beaked in? Hello. We are back. We are live. We are in a new location. My um my computer my bandwidth uh, shut down on, on me at home, so I am uh, at Gobit Lodge. You know, like the the um director says the show must go on. Yes. So I am here at Gobit Lodge. I am uh, in the process here of getting everything set up. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to give this to you guys to check out. Check this out. This is the video I was talking to you guys about before. I tried airing it from home, and of course it didn't happen. So um, here you go. This is the one.
there it is, the video in its entirety. Uh, I've been trying to get a hold of that video for a while. I'm glad I found it. I don't even know where that chat all came from. There's yeah. nobody else talking here. Anyway, 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 anyway. So, anyway, that um, that was the video. I hope you guys got to see it all because it's a really awesome video. And um, if you didn't, you can uh, go on YouTube, and it is the title is I'll just look for it here. Anti shale protesters surround SWN equipment in Rexton, Kent. Uh, what does it say? It looks like Kent Council instead. Council. That's why I couldn't find it. It says in Kent Council. Council? Yeah. <laughs> what I kept heck? typing in Kent County and it wasn't coming up. But anyway, that's the uh, name of the <laughs> video. And if you're wanting to watch it in its entirety, it's there. Um, right after that, uh, there's so, so, so many more videos. Um, we're still having technical issues here. I don't don't know what's happening, but uh, again, um, we're trying to do a uh, year in review sort of thing. Uh, trying to to dig out some of the highlights and uh, you know just like everything else, the low lights. Um, so when we left yesterday. Um, uh, yesterday was pretty hard um, having to uh, to go through some of this all over again it, it's pretty crazy it's pretty uh, it really does uh, mess with your emotions and your mind a bit so um, I'm gonna try and keep it uh, professional and see what I could do um, I'm looking for more videos of um, the, the next couple days because there were so many awesome videos uh, from just random people uh, coming and, and recording and they're recording different um, views of it and I think that's the, the most important part is that uh, there were, you know for every individual there was also an individual view and they uh, a different perspective and that that's the the you know I think the best part of all of this is that everybody had a chance um, you know to view their opinions and everything else and uh, we tried to keep the the camp uh, as open as possible uh, one thing that we made sure that we would not uh, stand for was to have any alcohol or drugs in the camp uh, especially the one that was near the um, near the sacred fire where the uh, the gates to the compound um, like I said yesterday um, the, um, the 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 protest site um, it became two two camps um, one camp was uh, the Warriors Camp, and that's how it was named. That's how it was known. Um, it was called the Warriors Camp, and then there was the uh, Protectors uh, Camp, and the Peaceful. It started to become known as the Peace the Peace Camp. So, um, anyways, that uh, that came about, and so. Um, Things just continued rolling, and we uh, uh, continued life as it was in the two camps. And uh, uh, the whole intention, uh, no, there wasn't even, you know, as far as I was concerned, there was no uh, intent on separating the two. There, was, there shouldn't, you know, in my heart, there should not have been a divide. There should not have been uh, two separate camps. And... Um, Unfortunately, that's, you know, that's reality and that did happen. Um, I had, like I said, the camp that I was in was strictly no alcohol, no drugs. And the other camp, well, I didn't see any, but I sure as heck smelt it. So, um, you know, I, I know it was there. But um, it even got to the point where I wouldn't even go to that other side. 
and um, because I, I didn't want to really know exactly what was going on back there. Um, you know, the um, when things like this happen, people really need to uh, to um, I don't know how to say this politely, but uh, to get off of their high horses and stand together. Uh, that video I just showed you, that was such a powerful, powerful moment in the whole um, camp. That was like the epitome of what this camp was um, meant to be, what this whole uh, thing started off to be in June of 13. When we um, came together then, the June 5th, 2013, that day was the beginning of this unity and beginning of this peaceful movement to end the uh, shale exploration in our territory. And um, that uh, moment was, uh, it carried us all the way through. And then when we got to, uh, I mean, like we were on 126 for, I think, like the whole month of June. Then we were in the woods for uh, the month of July. And then we came out of the woods uh, around mid July, I think maybe end of July around that time. Um, and then uh, SWN left. They took a break for the month of August. Month of August, they were still around. Uh, we were still on high alert. The people were still out scouting just as they were still out uh, surveying and doing whatever. Um, uh, not necessarily SWN, but their subcontractors. Um, so, uh, you know, there was still, you know, but the month of August, you know, seemed to quiet down. It got, you know, people rested and whatnot. And then uh, beginning of September, the, we heard they were coming back and we see people around and we hear, you know, rumors, oh, they're here, they're there, you know, and of course we start doing the whole run around again. Uh, you know, it's almost like, uh, where's Waldo? But uh, in our case, it was, uh, where's SWN? So, um we continued going and fight, looking and looking, and then uh, somebody had mentioned somewhere, somewhere along the line, that uh, they're building something in, in Rexton, and yeah, you know, of course, again, you know, it's uh, you know, a lot of times it's rumors, but a lot of times, you know, we have to actually go and check it out anyway, regardless of what. To so somebody had gone and checked it out, and they said, yeah, there seems to be some sort of fence being built and whatnot. So we really didn't do anything about it until we actually noticed that uh, equipment and stuff was being moved in. And right around, uh, they really weren't uh, there very long uh, without actually us uh, make putting the spotlight on them and making people aware that they're there. Uh, the Friday before we uh, took over the compound that Sunday, we um, I noticed that they were there, and so I started, um, you know, wave, not really waving people down or anything like that, but just standing there, and of course people recognized me, and they would stop and say, so what's going on, Lorraine? And I, and I tell them, you know, well, uh, SWN seems to be uh, making a, a camp here or something, and uh, just keeping an eye on them sort of thing, and so they... Um, of course, uh, you know, people stop and pull over and uh, sit and chat and everything. And the next thing you know, they keep on going and another vehicle comes. So this happened for two days straight. And then um, on the 29th, like uh, I said earlier, uh, a van showed up. Not sure if it was uh, who it was, but the RCMP kept saying uh, Joseph Peter or Peter Joseph or something to that effect. But anyways, nobody even knew who the guy was. So we um, we just ignored the RCMP. And then, of course, they wanted to tow the truck. And the women got in the way and said, no, you're not, you're not doing anything. And so I'm just doing a really quick review of what happened. And so now, uh, yesterday was treaty day. I showed you the videos there uh, of what happened. And uh, today, it's uh, October 2nd. 2014 
Um, and we're just, like I said, just going over, doing some review, uh, looking for, uh, well, right now, I'm, as I'm yakking at you guys, I'm uh, looking for more videos. Um, cause I, I know there's so many out there and I just want to kind of, you know, show you guys like what really was out there, what was really going on. Cause not everybody, um, seen, you know, um, what was going on and not everybody was completely aware of, um, oh, darn. Okay. Uh, you know, people weren't aware of what really was happening and what, you know, but I just want to show you guys some videos that, you know, this wasn't all, um, it wasn't all battle. It was, um, there was a lot of good times and, um, yeah, then that's what I want to show you guys tonight. I don't want to show you, uh, yelling and screaming and, you know, all this other, you know, stuff that, uh, this protest is being um, spotlighted as I want I want you guys to see you know what happened in between what happened from September 29 to you know October 16 because then after that you know things as most of you know went to hell um, but that's what I want to show you guys and um, so today is just going to be basically about videos and you know uh, Whatever I find, I'll explain. Uh, if you have questions, please, by all means, you know, type them in. Talk to me. I really don't want to sit here and yak for an hour or so. Um, <laughs> tired. <laughs> a long day. Um, so I'm going to just roll this one. It says, A Little Walk in the Anti-Shale Protest in Rexton, Kent County. And this is, again, our, our best friend, Charles LeBlanc. He was uh, the johnny on the spot for videos uh this guy just went everywhere and did everything he he was he was awesome and he didn't care he he got right in the faces and you know asked the those tough questions so um here's charles i'll be back now well i'm not staying too long anyway but
Yeah, so uh, yeah, that was Charles uh, doing his thing. And um, uh, he, um, he got so well known, like everybody knows him now. And, uh, you know, he was well known before this, but um, he was always the guy, uh, no matter what, who he interviewed, what he, you know, who, it, it was always. Uh, so uh, how do you think this is going to end? <laughs> this is his favorite phrase is, uh, how do you think this is going to end? And uh, every time he interviewed somebody, he had that same question. So what do you think is going to happen? And how do you think this is going to end? Uh, but that was Charles, and that was his, his catchphrase. And uh, so, uh, like I said, I'm just going to continue running some videos. Uh, if you guys, you know, you know, please come out and talk. I mean, I, I only have two viewers showing here, so... Um, yeah. Uh, here they're inspecting all of our stuff. So, um, yeah, that video, um, I, I don't see a date on it, but I, I want to check it out. Um, uh, okay, it says here on October, well, it was published October 17th. Um, and I, I'm not sure when he shot that video. Um, I'm just going to quickly check something out here. Um, that, uh, just as I'm doing that, I'll, I'll explain that video. And as to the reason why I, um, wanted that up there was, um, that, um, that video was, um, to me, the beginning of, um, Okay, that was on a Thursday, um, October 17th. That was just before Elsie Book Day. Day. Um, that video, I believe, was uh, 
because it says it was published the 17th, I believe it was shot like the 16th of October. Um, and the reason why I say that is because of the uh, uh, the background of that video. That um, we had finally gotten a meeting with the government, with Alward and his uh, cronies, and um, the at that time he insisted that he only meet with um, New Brunswick people, New Brunswickers, is what he continued to say. He would only meet with New Brunswick citizens, um, as he uh, as he put it. Uh, he was he did not want to meet with the warriors. He did not want to have anything to do with the warriors. Um, we. Um, Um, as this was going on, uh, this is when, to me, anyway, my this is where everything turned around uh, for me, where um, I was asked and I was given permission to be one of the people at that table. Um, I was um, there along with uh, other members of our community. I was there with our chief and council. Um, I was there with uh, the, the Francophone representatives, with the Anglophone representatives. Um, there was um, uh, Parliament representatives in that room. And then, of course, um, the Allward, the former premier. And uh, the former, I love to say this, former energy minister, Craig Leonard. Um, and um, there was a couple of other people there. I can't remember uh, exactly who they were, why they were there. But uh, anyways, the whole thing was um, that morning I was confronted by two of the warriors uh, saying that um, we shouldn't... Uh, it was just all crazy what was going on at first, you know, and then uh, they started saying that uh, the meeting shouldn't happen, that um, it, it's a sellout, it's uh, it, it's a trap, it's uh, all of this stuff. Uh, major paranoia started kicking in. Um, there was a just real, I don't know, just outright crazy thinking coming out of these two. And... Um, I tried to reassure them that I would not walk into a meeting, um, uh, that's going to sell out this movement. You know, I would not, um, sell my people out. Um, I don't give a crap how much they offered me. Um, and there was no danger. I was not in danger. I knew I was going to be there with my chief and our counselors. And I, there was elders there even. I knew I wasn't in danger. I knew there wasn't going to be any kind of raid because it would only cause more, like, we, October 17th would have, like, just completely blown up. But... The, the whole thing was um, the, the paranoia was already there in that camp, in the warrior's camp. And it didn't matter what we said or did. There was, you know, their leader was going to say uh, it's a sellout or it's a trap or it's this or it's that and the other thing. Um, so at this point... Uh, the the reason why this man uh, that is speaking on the the loudspeaker is, uh, yeah, they did call while we're in the meeting, and they're they're going on, and they're the ones that are threatening uh, that they're going to cause a riot. They're going to do something if we, as representatives, don't walk out, and um, you know, in fear of what this idiot might have done. Um, 
I stood there, you know, in front of the, the group and like, I was in tears. I mean, I was bawling my eyes out saying, you know, let's just go back because I don't trust this guy. I don't know what he's going to do when he's talking like this. I don't know what's happening. And I explained to them what this guy was talking, how he was talking the morning before I left. So it, it, it really scared me on uh, what this guy uh, was you know what was in his head and what might have come out and um there's another video somewhere also i don't know where but it actually he has the bullhorn and he's yelling that you know if we don't walk away from the table he's going to start blowing shit up and uh he really scared our supporters a lot of our supporters uh that were there at the peace camp started walking away from us because of this guy started leaving like packing up and leaving because of this guy uh he was complete rogue um uh, warrior and he was turning all of those other warriors the same way and it was getting really scary um like if you can't control if you don't have control then what can you do right and um like so we just kept that wall. We, we continued to, to leave that wall there and say, okay, you guys do what you have to do. You do whatever it is you want to do sort of thing. Just leave us out of it. You know, we're here for peace. We're here alcohol and drug free, and that's where we want to stay. And so that worked for a little while. And yeah, actually, I'm I'm wrong about this date too because I'm just reading it now, and it said like when it was published, but that was after everything had happened, right? So it had to have been um, like earlier, the week before, because the week before would have been, um, I would say, about the twelve, eleven, twelve, something like that. Um, maybe even earlier 10 anyways but it was the week before uh the whole thing blew up really because like we're in, in october 2 now everything blew up uh 15 days um after so um from that video um you know, like things were 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 okay i would say our first weekend um yeah, everything was great. Um, the next week, that's when things started getting a little crazy as far as, well, we didn't get a little crazy. This rogue warrior started getting a little crazy. And I don't know if he was bored or what the heck was his problem, but uh, some things were, were said and done that should never have been said. Um, there was a video out there, too. Um, I don't know if people had seen this. Um that this guy had uh, uh, proudly stood in front of uh, RCMP and started going on about the things that he can do and and uh, very uh, degraded a female RCMP officer. And, um, you know, I, I don't have any love for the <laughs> RCMP at all, um, but you know, this is guy came here into our territory saying he is uh here to protect the women uh not one woman is going to get hurt for as long as he's here for as long as he's um uh, warrior whatever i don't know what the heck his title was um anyway um he continued to say oh no more women are going to get hurt and blah 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 but with his actions alone um and his words he wasn't showing us that he was there to, to, to protect us. And um, truth be told, uh, by the end of this whole protest, uh, protection, encampment, whatever you want to call it, um, I didn't feel safe there. I didn't feel like he was protecting me. I didn't. I, I felt more threatened by him uh, and his, uh, his uh, band of merry men, if you want to say. Uh, I, I, some of them, yes. Some of those young boys in there, yes, they were true warriors because they stood up and, and they helped and they did what a warrior would do. Uh, 
you know, they, they carried food for the elders. They, uh, they served some of the elders. They, uh, you know, carried water. They brought in wood. They did, you know, they did what a warrior would do. Uh, they protected and they looked out for uh, the women, children, and the elders. Some of them, like I said, were following this other guy, and he uh, he was on a path of destruction. And, and you know, some people, uh, like I said, I'm going to be saying stuff here that is going to get people so pissed off, but uh, <laughs> this is me. I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm not... You know, this guy's already been convicted, uh, and he's served what a, a joke on the time that he served. Um, the other two young men who um, were actually stood as warriors served more time than he did. Um, and they say that I sold out. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, there's still bitterness there. I'm sorry, but yes, there is. Um, the, um, so like, that's why I wanted you to see this video and hear the words that was being said on, at the camp while myself, and I believe there was like a dozen of us, maybe more sitting around the table, talking with the, uh, premier and begging and literally like begging to have this process stopped until we could actually sit and have true consultation with the people. We wanted true consultation with the people. And they insisted, well, they're only taking pictures now. This is what's the Allward's words. They're only taking pictures now. Um, so I sat and I, there was, a, like I said, there was a fairly large table. We all sat there and um, everyone had a chance to speak. All of the people who were there, all the representatives. And it got to me and, and um, uh, Allward and Leonard both, you know, had chances to respond to each person and whatnot. And um, when it, it got to me, I, I could not help but... Um, I had to ask them that, um, you know, they continued to say they're only taking pictures, but they're only taking pictures. So I had to ask, pose the question to both of them, and, and I straight out asked them, I said, when was the last time that somebody came up to you, took your picture, and shook you so bad that you lost your bodily functions? And both of them looked at me with this such, I don't know, shock or what it was, but both of them just had this look on their face. And I knew I got them. I knew they, they had no answer for that. So I told them both. I said, you know, well, you keep saying that's what they're doing, you know, right now to our mother. I said, but actually what, you, what they're doing, I said, is they're taking and they're shaking her so damn bad that she's losing her bodily functions and then they stand back and take pictures of it. I said, her breath is coming up through the ground. I said, and these guys are standing around taking pictures of it. Um, I said, you know, like that's disgusting. <laughs> um, but neither of them had an answer for me. And I knew, I knew neither of them would have an answer for me, but he, uh, tried to weasel his way out of saying, you know, well, we have the strictest, strictest uh, regulations and everything else. And, and I threw at him too, that there's no regulations. Um, these guys don't follow regulations. We've been following them since June of 2013. And uh, they're not following any regulations because there's nobody out there enforcing the damn regulations. You know, you, to have regulations is one thing, but who the hell was enforcing them? Nobody. Uh, they didn't have any supervisors on the ground. They didn't have anybody in charge on the ground. Even the RCMP didn't even have anybody in charge on the ground. Because when, when stuff happened, every freaking time, they said, well, we have to call the commander. And if anything happened with uh, SWN, oh, we had to call whoever the hell that woman was that was in Moncton. You know, it, there was never anybody on the ground of any kind of authority. And so, you know, that's why I say, if there's regulations, then who the hell was enforcing them? 
nobody except for us. We made them accountable. We made them follow the regulations. And if they didn't follow them, we were booting their asses out. And we did a number of times. Every time we found that there was a, a violation of the regulations, which was pretty well every time, we showed them up and we made them pack up and move on. So, you know, uh, it just, it, it drives me nuts that, you know, we went through all of this. We, we did everything. And, you know, like, yeah, we booted them out of our territory. We booted them off our land a number of times. You know, we did not have to use any kind of violence. We didn't have to use any kind of weapons. We didn't have to have, you know, anything erupt. And then all of a sudden we have October 17th. Uh, and you know, like, like I said, you know, um, we, we don't have room. We didn't have, and we still don't have room for any kind of errors like this. Uh, we can't continue to allow people to come into our territory and take over, um, our situations. We need to take care of our own. Uh, yes, it's great having all the support. It's even more seeing the people here standing shoulder to shoulder with us. Um, even more, you know, with the drums and the, the ceremonies and everything else. But, like, uh, and I said this before, like, if your intentions are to come down here and uh, you know, be uh renegade or whatever the heck it is uh just save us the trouble uh we've had enough and um you know we're and we're still dealing with some of the people that came down here who um are being renegades and are are, are giving us a hard time in our own territory uh you know like we we finally just got rid of i think um from what i was told the the last of the uh um, Nova Scotia Warrior Society uh, moved out. I think they said it was like uh, end of uh, middle of last month or something like that. When the two warriors got um, uh, released, is from what I was told that the the Nova Scotia Warriors uh, pulled out of uh, New Brunswick. Um, you know, with like it's been. Uh, you know, a, quite a while, and um, you know, as far as I was concerned, there was no need for them anymore. You know, everything happened. SWN packed up and left. Uh, you know, they came back in November. Then we, uh, you know, fought them again, uh, just the same as we did before. We did it without violence. We did it without anything. Uh, we stopped them a number of times. We uh, completely, uh, you know shut them down i mean literally shut them down for at least uh, a half hour and there was no violence except for what violence was you know that they shared with us that the, i mean the rcmp not the uh, well swm workers and the the uh contractors were, were not uh friendly at all uh the the verbal abuse was uh ridiculous the accusations and false ac accusations and everything that the Irving security is coming out with lately is ridiculous. But, um, uh, <laughs> I just feel like I'm just ranting right now, but, um, uh, I'm only down to one. Okay. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to find another video for you guys. Uh, where did he go? Um, hold on a second here I'm just gonna keep looking I had a video lined up um, it's um, oops see what happened here okay there's the blogger oh I don't want to show that one that's crazy nope we will not show that one where did it go yeah that's that's the one with the an amateur video of the uh, cars on fire. 
Uh, we'll save that one. <laughs> Why isn't it flipping over? Again, this is Charles the Blogger.
<laughs> that's Charles for you. He, uh, like you said, um, he was really uh, the guy on the spot, really, uh, you know, whenever we needed uh, videos. Too bad we didn't have him uh, going live because uh, <laughs> some of the stuff that he's, uh, he's done said and done was uh pretty uh it was pretty hilarious but uh here's another one uh that video there that was in november actually he he aired that on the day that i was arrested so he was back in fredericton uh loading up his um his videos uh the day i was arrested the second time and um the 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 this next video is just more of uh the camp and different areas. Yeah, it's a couple days. So that that's just a prime example of a normal regular day uh, at the camp. The um, like he said it on the video that was uh, October fifth, uh, not even quite a year ago. Uh, well, within a couple of days, this is October second now. Uh, that video was aired uh, October fifth, and um, you know like you can you you can see you it's. Uh, <laughs> that little kid, you know, driving around on a tricycle, and another one playing ball, and the other kids, you know, playing in the woods, and you know, there, there wasn't. Uh, it's not, you know, what the media has portrayed the whole, uh, you know, the whole place to be. You know, we we were walking around with weapons and all this other shit, and you know, being all militant and you know, crazy. Most of the time, we slept <laughs> trying to keep our energy up. But, um, oh yeah, that's another one he did, uh, the, the nighttime one. I forgot about that. I'm going to show you guys this one just, you know, to, uh, emphasize that, uh, you know, this is, this was the fun part. <laughs>
Alrighty. Oops. Hold on. Uh, stop. Okay. So uh, yeah, I just want to show you guys those videos, and to um, to give you you know the the I don't know like the real story I guess that um, you know when the seventeenth happened, everything else that happened after that and before that. Uh, just disappeared and you know there was more people there was more